SARS-CoV-2 causes a multi-system inflammatory disease syndrome. But patients who were hospitalized, so 30% of those, they also suffer from neurological manifestations, including loss of smell or taste, diminished consciousness, epilepsy, and psychosis. So besides this, we have neurological symptoms and some patients additionally endure Parkinsonism. Also, right now, there are publications which are coming from studies in experimental animals and also studies which are coming just from in vitro models, which are showing that in vitro models, uh, virus is capable of uh, infecting neurons and is capable in uh, multiplying in glial cells. Glial cells are supporting neurons, so they could be in the brain. And also, we have uh, studies coming from post-mortem investigation of tissues in people who suffered from COVID, and then they died after prolonged COVID, and then they will study it of where exactly in their body the virus is found. There are substantial amounts of people where virus is found in the brain. In some studies, RNA is found, but not viral particles, which means that infection takes place, but it's not a productive infection making more virus. But on the other hand, for brain, it really doesn't matter whether the virus is produced there. Right now, all the debates are whether the virus is produced there or not. But for the people who are suffering from virus, it's really not of consequence. Because if there is a lot of virus in the body, and virus just passively brought into the brain and able to infect cells but not produced there, it doesn't matter because virus is in the brain and it's causing uh, the derangement, metabolic derangement, inflammatory derangement, uh, sometimes even structural derangements, as evident from anosmia and agusia. Anosmia, lack of smell, agusia is lack of proper taste in a lot of people. So we do know that those neurological symptoms are connected to the brain. And today I want to discuss with you some new scientific hypothesis, which explain uh, at least in part, the pathology of long COVID, meaning that uh, uh, the symptoms which are seen in patients after they already cleared the infection, so they are PCR negative. There is no virus there anymore. We declare victory, right? No virus anymore. But people suffer from a range of symptoms. I should say from the very beginning for you that this hypothesis is kind of scary. It's not completely confirmed yet. We just having certain evidence in its favor. And I will show for you those evidence, and then you can uh, look at this evidence and do conclusion for yourself. But again, it's not a proven hypothesis. We are not saying that that happens with everybody. What is not happening with everybody could be true for at least some cases. And we need to find out in what proportion of cases this is uh, really true. So I will start from totally different subject. I will start from dementia, which is seen in old people. Mm -hmm. Without any coronavirus, there are a couple of subtypes of dementia. And there are two diseases of the old age which are having names, large names. Everybody knows those names. One of them is Alzheimer's disease, another is Parkinson's disease. I will remind you, Alzheimer's disease is loss of uh, memory, usually short-term memory. Parkinson's disease is uh, the problem with motor functions. It usually starts with tremor of the arms, but also it can go throughout the body, so it could be unstable gait, etc., etc. Those two diseases are separate diseases, but there is a special type of Parkinson's disease which is more rapid than classical Parkinson, and that is having a constellation of symptoms, both from Parkinson and from dementia. And this dementia, which is found in Parkinson disease patients, not in all of them, just in some of them, is not like Alzheimer type of dementia, but as different yet another type of dementia, which also is found in people, but very often it is not diagnosed properly because we tend to generalize all dementia cases into Alzheimer. 